have tonight Noel Ward, the Deputy General Secretary, who is going to uh, his lecture on divided loyalties, divided teachers. So give him the best attention, thanks class. <laughs> thanks, Henry. Okay, well, uh, thanks for coming out um, th this evening. And uh, what, uh, what, what this paper does and what this lecture does this evening is to examine the background and the early course of the, the one enduring split. Uh, that occurred in the 150-year history of the INTO, that is the, the division which resulted in the formation of the Ulster Teachers Union in 1919. Well, th this lecture is about uh, the INTO, the Irish National Teachers Organisation, in a very turbulent period of Irish history, uh, before partition, uh, the period from 1912 uh, onwards through th th those very troubled years, and ultimately telling the story of the split in INTO, which resulted in the foundation in 1919 of the Ulster Teachers Union. Up to uh, 1919, INTO was a single organisation uh, since 1868, and Northern teachers had been really active both in the foundation of INTO and in the story of INTO. There had, had been numerous Northern presidents, uh, there were Northern members of the executive, uh, Catholic teachers, Protestant teachers, uh, all together in INTO uh, prior to the UTU split. There had been some previous difficulties. Uh, there was a, a serious difficulty about uh, teacher dismissals at the turn of the 19th into the 20th century which uh, gave rise to the foundation of a Protestant teachers union but within INTO, within the terms of INTO. However the period, the home rule period from 1912 uh, onwards right into the First World War it really challenged people on the island about their loyalties. Uh, to whom were they loyal? Were they in favour of home rule or against? And although INTO sought to exclude those arguments from within its own debates they did creep in, inevitably. Um, people's loyalties, political, cultural, social, relig religious loyalties, did come to the fore and divided uh, in various ways the organisation. Uh, for example, um, in late 1916, uh, soon after the Easter Rising, there was a remarkable lobby in London uh, by INTO on a salary question, and the lobby was supported by every Irish MP, including Edward Carson, the Unionist MP who played a prominent role, and John Redmond, the leader of the Irish party. And it was said at the time that only the INTO could unite the political forces just like that. And INTO was proud of being able to do that, but it wasn't to last. And within three years of that lobby, INTO would be split uh, in the north. One of the issues that uh, gave rise to the divide was the affiliation of INTO with the Trade Union Congress. And the Irish Trade Union Congress took on the title and Labour Party in 1912. So it was in reality a political party, albeit one confined to trade unionists, uh, as well as a trade union movement. And the political party was seen to take on a, a nationalist hue. And that offended a number of INTO teachers in the north. They were also offended by the particular involvement of the trade union movement in the anti-conscription campaign in 1918 to prevent um, forced recruitment into the British Army coming into Ireland, which was being mooted at the time uh, by the UK government, by the, the British government, because of the, the loss, the enormous loss of life during the First World War. Uh, and, and that was a very difficult issue for teachers in the North who are fundamentally very loyal uh, to, to Britain. Ultimately, uh, the split of UTU came about in 1919 when four branches of INTO, four associations as they were called of INTO, decided to secede from the organisation. Uh, Coleraine, Newton Ards, uh, Lisburn and Londonderry were the four associations that seceded. They tried at first to form a new union around the Irish Protestant National Teachers Union, which was within INTO, but that didn't work out for them. So uh, in uh, early, or sorry, in mid-1919 uh, at the Ulster Museum at a meeting, the Ulster Teachers Union was founded. And the Ulster Teachers Union was, its main organiser was a man called Joseph Smith, who had previously been involved in INTO in Lisburn, the Lisburn Association, and uh, he, he drove it forward. Um, there's a lot of uh, discussion uh, in, in what I want to talk about, uh, about why did the UTU survive? There had been previous movements outside INTO, they were short-lived, and they became in, reintegrated into the INTO quickly, where there were clearly a number of issues. I mean, partition was new, there was a parliament in Northern Ireland from 1921, 
Uh, the unionist um, administration favoured the UTU over other teacher unions uh, and a number of factors. One could also say the INTO did not try very hard to win back those teachers, not because of any conscious decision, but they were very much distracted by a range of huge issues going on at the time, including an issue around the 1919 education bill, which was an enormous debate in Ireland, very contentious, and INTO was diverted into, in, into that rather than trying to win back uh, it, its, its sundered colleagues. Most Protestant teachers stayed with INTO at the time. Uh, the Protestant Teachers Union leaders stayed with INTO. Uh, and it, you know, over a number of years, however, the, the, the split became more marked uh, along, I suppose, cultural, religious lines. Um, but nonetheless, even as early as 1941, uh, you know, 20 years after the split, just over 20 years after it, there was big cooperation beginning between INTO and UTU. And certainly today, there is tremendous cooperation between the, the two organisations, you know, and one would hope that even old splits like that are not beyond healing. I thought it was very good. It's give an uh, insight into the political difficulties that existed in the, during the Great War and after it, and which probably are reflected still today in that some of the issues that caused division are probably still there today. It was, it was very, very interesting. It was, it was interesting to find out the, the, how the UTU actually did break away from the NTO. I had been interested in that. I possibly might have liked to, I don't really, I didn't really want to ask too many questions, but it was with the Longman brother. He asked questions and uh, I would have mean, maybe liked to have heard more about the payment of the NTO members whenever they decided not to recognise the state, but it was a really, really interesting lecture. The lecture tonight uh, on the um, INTO, the heritage of the INTO and the Ulster Teachers Union was an excellent insight for me into just where we both started, how we both started and the things that happened in our own history and the history of Ireland, North and South, that influenced and impacted on the growth of both organisations both together, separating separately, and even up to, to, to the present day where we thankfully do once again enjoy good working relations that, is, that are good for education as a whole and good for all our members.